Anarchism is a socio-political model taking various forms, but typically upholding certain specific principles. Broadly speaking, an anarchist society is a non-coercive anti-hierarchical society, achieved without the traditional state apparatus, in which members choose voluntarily to participate. The English word anarchism is derived from the Greek word anarchia, meaning no rulers. Contrary to popular misconception, it does not mean no law. Similarly, although anarchism is fundamentally anti-authoritarian and anti-hierarchical, anarchists typically recognise that any well-functioning society will inevitably involve power disparities of some kind, and argue that hierarchies and authority structures should be minimised to those which are strictly necessary. Of course, anarchists disagree among themselves as to which authority structures and hierarchies are necessary. Anarchism has various historical antecedents in the pre-modern era, and proto-anarchism can be found throughout history in various cultures around the world. However, the modern history of formalised anarchism starts in the 18th century with William Goodwin's philosophical anarchism, followed by the more structured social anarchism of 19th century figures such as Pierre-Joseph Proudhon and Mikhail Bakunin. Rather than presenting a detailed history of anarchism, this video will provide a taxonomy of anarchism, explaining the primary features of different anarchist models. Anarchist systems are described here without criticism of their features, though the more controversial aspects of some systems are occasionally cited. It should be remembered that the purpose of this video is to describe the most common forms of anarchism as a brief introduction to anarchism for people with little or no knowledge of anarchism, rather than to provide a comprehensive overview of all alternative political systems. Consequently, Although some non-anarchist systems are described here, they have been chosen primarily to provide a point of reference with anarchist systems, rather than to describe them in detail. If you're already knowledgeable about or experienced with anarchism, feel free to contribute by posting your thoughts in the comment section. Anarchist systems are notoriously difficult to define and differentiate with sharp distinctions, and some anarchists will invariably disagree with some aspects of the way these anarchist systems are characterised here. Nevertheless, these descriptions are based on mainstream scholarly literature, see the bibliography link in the description, and can be considered reliably accurate in broad brushstroke terms. Most of the information presented here on anarchism can be validated by reading pages 1 to 3 of Anarchism, A Very Short Introduction by Colin Ward, published in 2004, and pages 3 to 38 of Anarchism, A Beginner's Guide by Ruth Kinner, published in 2005. Although these are relatively brief guides, they do provide well-researched scholarly definitions which are very accessible to the average reader. For Christian anarchism in particular, I strongly recommend Christian Anarchism, a political commentary on the Gospel by Alexandre Christo Yenopoulos, published in 2013. It's a comprehensive work on the subject, citing many primary, secondary and tertiary sources with a formidable 40-page bibliography. This matrix characterises socio-political systems across four axes. Firstly, collectivism versus individualism. Secondly, anti-property versus pro-property. Thirdly, anti-market versus pro-market. And fourthly, anarchist or anti-state versus totalitarian or pro-state. Note that the matrix displayed here is not shown exactly to scale, and descriptions of each anarchist system are approximations rather than fine-grained and precise. Although I designed this matrix myself, later I found a very similar figure on page 38 of Ruth Kinner's book, Anarchism, A Beginner's Guide. This was reassuring, since it provides validation for my own matrix. Now let's look at these anarchist systems. Firstly, we'll consider the strongly to weakly collectivist systems. Anarcho-primitivism, anarcho-communism, anarcho-collectivism, and anarcho-syndicalism. Anarcho-primitivism is strongly anarchist, strongly collectivist, strongly anti-market, and strongly anti-property. 
Its most distinctive feature is a deliberate regression to pre-industrial society, or even a pre-agricultural society, which typically includes opposition to the domestication of animals and plants, and opposition to the hunting of animals. Although anarcho-primitivism typically correlates with eco-feminism and anti-patriarchal views, it remains in tension with feminism, since it would require women to accept pre-industrial rates of death in childbirth and a much shorter life expectancy, and would expose children to pre-industrial rates of infant mortality. It also has a strong tendency towards ableism, since an anarcho-primitivist society not only favours mentally and physically abled people, but also disadvantages people who are neurodivergent, or mentally or physically disabled or less abled, by depriving them of medication and technology which helps improve their quality of life. Anarcho-primitivism arguably also suffers from a romanticised view of pre-modern and pre-agricultural life, which perpetuates the dangerous myth of the noble savage, and imagines that the vast majority of social evils will naturally be eliminated, simply by returning to the lifestyle of the pre-Neolithic age of around 15,000 years ago, commonly known as the Stone Age, a view which is optimistic at best, and complete fantasy at worst. The next three systems are very similar, differing in implementation and aims. Anarcho-communism is strongly anarchist, strongly collectivist, strongly anti-market, and strongly anti-property. Its most distinctive features include common ownership of the means of production, collectively owned property, and the abolition of wage labour and private property. It is differentiated from communism primarily by its rejection of both social hierarchies and the state. Anarcho-collectivism is strongly anarchist, strongly collectivist, strongly anti-market, and strongly anti-property. Its most distinctive features include collective ownership of the means of production, a communal market, the preservation of wage labour, and the abolition of private property. It is differentiated from anarcho-communism primarily by its use of wage labour and a collective market rather than collectively owned property. Anarcho-syndicalism is strongly anarchist, moderately collectivist, strongly anti-market, and strongly anti-property. Its most distinctive features include a socio-economic system of labour syndicates, strong egalitarianism, rejection of any unjustifiable hierarchy, and the abolition of wage labour and private property. It is differentiated from anarcho-collectivism primarily by its rejection of wage labour. Now we'll consider the four weakly to strongly individualist systems. Anarcho-mutualism, Christian anarchism, anarcho-individualism, and anarcho-capitalism. Anarcho-mutualism is strongly anarchist, weakly to moderately individualist, weakly pro-market, though the market is strongly regulated rather than free, and weakly pro-property. Its most distinctive features include the preservation of private property, a strong emphasis on voluntarism and liberty of conscience, the preservation of wage labour, and the abolition of private property. Its founder, Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, characterised it as, quote, the synthesis of communism and property. Christian anarchism is strongly anarchist, weakly to moderately individualist, weakly pro-market, though the market is strongly regulated rather than free, and weakly pro-property. Christian anarchism is arguably one of the earliest forms of systematic anarchism, since it is documented in Christian communities of the first three centuries of the Christian era. It is very similar to anarcho-mutualism, emphasising strongly the mutual responsibility of society's members to each other, and communal action. In many ways, it can be seen as anarcho-mutualism organised according to a Christian ethos. Christian anarchism is focused far more on social organisation than political and economic organisation, so specific economic views and values may differ between Christian anarchists. Consequently, although communal organisation, shared labour and economic cooperation are encouraged, including various forms of worker-owned organisations, such as co-ops, there is no specific stance on private property. Nevertheless, exploitative labour and economic practices are condemned strongly. Christian anarchism is strongly egalitarian and socially revolutionary, rejecting any ethically unjustifiable hierarchies, 
and recognizing God as the only supreme authority. Christian anarchism emphasizes volunteerism and freedom of conscience, rejecting any forms of social organization by force, and typically agrees with a strong separation between church and state. Christian anarchism also opposes military conscription and participation in the military, but promotes civil disobedience, passive resistance, and revolution by personal example rather than coercion. Leo Tolstoy was an early Christian anarchist, and his book The Kingdom of God is Within You, published in 1894, was an influential work on the movement. Anarcho-individualism is moderately anarchist, moderately too strongly individualist, moderately too strongly pro-market, and moderately too strongly pro-property. Although distinctive from other anarchist systems, it shares values with anarcho-mutualism and anarcho-capitalism. Although capitalism as such is typically rejected, competitive markets are not. Its most distinctive features include opposition to democracy, acceptance of a minimal state, preservation of private property, and general opposition to both collectivism and Christianity. Anarcho-capitalism is weakly anarchist, strongly individualist, strongly pro-market, and strongly pro-property. Its position in anarchism is much disputed, with many anarchists viewing it as a contradiction in terms due to its encouragement of capitalism, private property, the free market, wage labour, and comprehensive privatisation, as opposed to the communalism or collectivism which typically characterises anarchism. Anarcho-capitalism is often conflated with libertarianism, with which it shares most of its features. Having summarised briefly the key features of these common forms of anarchism, they will now be contrasted with non-anarchist systems which share some of the same features. These will be described in brief, since the aim here is simply to provide a useful counterpoint to identify how anarchism differs from them. Firstly, let's consider the four strongly to weakly collectivist systems. Marxism, Democratic Socialism, Stalinism and Marxist-Leninism, and Maoism. Marxist-Leninism and Stalinism are strongly collectivist, strongly anti-market, strongly totalitarian and pro-state, and strongly anti-property. Unlike anarchism, these systems not only permit, but actually encourage the enforcement of the system on society without reference to the liberty of the individual, and against their will if necessary. Although both systems ostensibly aim to build a classless and egalitarian communist system, they are diametrically opposed to anarchism insofar as they intend to first establish a socialist state with a socio-political hierarchy. Also contrary to anarchist principles, both Marxist-Leninism and Stalinism view political and physical violence as legitimate tools of social change and social control. Additionally, both systems typically outlaw unions and force workers to join state-owned labour organisations instead, subjugating workers to the state. Maoism, also known as Mao Zedong thought, Mao Zedong Zixiang in Chinese, is strongly collectivist, strongly anti-market, strongly totalitarian and pro-state, and strongly anti-property. As a development of Marxist-Leninism, it shares much of the same principles and therefore differs from anarchism in the same ways. It is differentiated from them mainly by its emphasis on the peasant class as the primary agents of revolution instead of the proletariat. Like Stalinism and Marxist-Leninism, Maoism considers violence to be a legitimate tool for bringing about the revolution and controlling members of society, encapsulated in Mao's famous quotation, political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. Qianggan zi li mian tu zheng guang in Chinese. Mao further stated, quote, According to the Marxist theory of the state, the army is the chief component of state power. Whoever wants to seize and retain state power must have a strong army, end quote. Marxism is strongly collectivist, strongly anti-market, moderately totalitarian and pro-state, and strongly anti-property. Marxism aims to overthrow capitalism through a violent socialist revolution of what Marx called, quote, revolutionary terror, end quote, and establish first a dictatorship of the proletariat, the working class, and ultimately a classless communist society. The fact that Marxism firstly establishes a totalitarian state 
and considers violence to be a legitimate tool for bringing about the revolution and controlling members of society, distinguishes it sharply from anarchism. Democratic socialism is moderately collectivist, moderately to strongly anti-market, moderately totalitarian and pro-state, and moderately anti-property. Distinctive features of democratic socialism include a socialist economy organised by a democratic state which owns most, if not all, of the means of production, the abolition of capitalism and wage labour, and limits on, but not abolition of, private property. Democratic socialism is differentiated from anarchism primarily by its organisation of a state and its institution of hierarchies, though democratic socialists often have a stateless society in view as a future goal. Now let's consider the four weakly to strongly individualist systems – social democracy, democratic liberalism, libertarianism and fascism. Social democracy is weakly individualist, moderately pro-market, weakly totalitarian and pro-state, and moderately pro-property. Distinctive features of social democracy include a capitalist economy run by a democratic state with a well-regulated market and an emphasis on social welfare systems provided by the government. Social democracy is differentiated from anarchism primarily by its organisation of a state, its institution of hierarchies and its capitalist economy. Democratic liberalism is moderately to strongly individualist, moderately to strongly pro-market, weakly totalitarian but pro-state, and moderately to strongly pro-property. Distinctive features of democratic liberalism include a capitalist economy run by a democratic state with a weakly regulated market, little or no emphasis on social welfare systems provided by the government, and the government prioritising corporations over members of society. Democratic liberalism is differentiated from anarchism primarily by its organisation of a state, its institution of hierarchies, its capitalist economy, its pro-market and pro-individualist stance, and its comparative lack of concern for government-provided social welfare. Libertarianism is strongly individualist, strongly pro-market, weakly totalitarian and weakly pro-state, and strongly pro-property. Distinctive features of libertarianism include a capitalist economy with a totally unregulated market, decentralised government with minimal intervention in the economy and society, and a virtually complete disregard for government-provided social welfare. Libertarianism is differentiated from anarchism primarily by its institution of hierarchies, its capitalist economy, its pro-market and pro-individualist stance, and its lack of concern for government-provided social welfare. Fascism is strongly individualist, strongly pro-market, strongly totalitarian and strongly pro-state, and strongly pro-property. Distinctive features of fascism include a strict regressive moralism, populist politics, dictatorial legislation, militarism, systemic state violence, right-wing values such as nationalism, traditionalism, xenophobia and racism, and an almost inevitable movement towards an ethnostate. Somewhat counterintuitively, fascism is not incompatible with social welfare, and regimes such as Mussolini's fascist Italy used welfare both to build grassroots support among the population and as a means of social control. However, fascist governments typically outlaw labour unions, forcing workers to join labour organisations under direct government control, preventing the workers from exercising labour autonomy and placing all their rights at the mercy of the state. That concludes this brief overview of typical anarchist systems. Future videos will provide detailed examinations of specific anarchist systems which I think are less well known or less well understood, such as anarcho-primitivism and Christian anarchism, and specific features of anarchist systems which are often misrepresented or misunderstood, such as anarchism's abolition of the state and opposition to hierarchies. Feel free to add your own thoughts and suggestions in the comment section below.